by building that ark by faith and then getting into it by faith. And when the door was shut, he stayed inside for seven days before the rain started to fall. He had to sit there while his faith was tested and while the outside world mocked him. But he sat in the ark and on the eighth day, it started to rain. And that was the end of the world, the old world. And it was sudden, brothers and sisters. When it starts, it doesn't stop. Mm. It starts and it does not stop. It just keeps coming and coming and coming and that's it. It's the end. And the people who were ready were in the ark and the people who were not ready were outside the ark. Did you know that before the rain started, there was a patriarch by the name of Methuselah. Do you know what Methuselah's name means? It means when he dies, it will be sent. Just let that sit, sink in. And before Methuselah died, every people knew his name meant that. And he died, and no one knew that the time was close. Today, I want to ask you, are we paying attention to the signs of the times? I'm here to tell you right now that if you go outside, even if you go to lots of churches who worship on this day, they will tell you that it could be a long ways off. If you open your Bibles with me to 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter three. Second Peter chapter three. Uh, I actually have this one up on the screen. <clears throat> I'm going to read three verses one to fourteen. This is Peter's second book. Beloved, I write unto you in both which I stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days. When? In the last days. Scoffers. What is a scoffer? Comedian. A comedian. Makes fun. People who mock. That's what a scoffer is. A scoffer walking after their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? Isn't that interesting? You go back here to this quote from Desire of Ages, and this verse is cited. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 22, the days are prolonged and every vision fails. That is what people were saying before the first advent. There were scoffers right before Jesus was born. Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly are ignorant, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. I'm not the one drawing the parallel between these two events. The Apostle Peter has written down and said, there is a parallel. There's a parallel between the flood and the end of the world. 
And just like the water was reserved for the destruction of the antediluvian world, fire is reserved unto the day of judgment. That's the Apostle Peter talking by inspiration. And just like there were scoffers before, there are scoffers today. We have lots of scoffers. There's no shortage of scoffers. They're out there right now protesting. <clears throat> but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning His promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy con conversation and godliness? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and new earth, wherein dwells righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Now, in the interest of time, I won't go back through Matthew 24, but we have wars and rumors of war foretold and famines and pestilence in diverse places. We have all of these factors, brothers and sisters. And now we're being told, this is yesterday, that there is going to be a food shortage. Not just a food shortage, like you can't get your favorite hamburger at Red Robin, which drives me crazy. But the kind of food shortage that affects everybody, that is going to be a catastrophe. That's going to be a catastrophe. I don't have the whole article up there, but of course they blame the war in Ukraine. And, you know. Circumstances beyond their control. There are economic problems coming. There is inflation coming, as was read this morning for the for the offertory. Hyperinflation is coming. We're told that the the nations of the earth will attempt to put the economy on a stable footing. That that here in the United States they will try to put the economy on stable footing and they will not be able to. They will strive valiantly to put it on a stable footing and they will not be able to. There has been quantitative easing and money printing like the world has never seen. And the national debt has been inflated. Just look at the charts. I don't have them here with me, but you can see the charts about the increase in the supply of money. There were lots of Harvard scholars, Yale scholars, who said that it didn't matter how much money you print. It's different this time. Modern monetary theory says that you can print as much money and there are no consequences. Turns out that's not the case. Who knew? Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here. This is a bit of a limb. Not too far. <laughs> if you turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. You read the record of the creation of this world. You see that on day one, this is Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. 
After every single day of creation, you have these words. In the evening and the morning were the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day. That tells you that each day was the same period of time. Right. How many days did it take to create the world? Six days. Six the exact same time periods, the evening and the morning were the first day, over and over and over and over again. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm a terrible artist, and uh, I don't expect that anybody to be able to make a whole lot of sense of uh, my drawings, so I'll try and keep them really simple. approximately 
6,000 years old. Amen. All right? And it is interesting that the book of Revelation says that they live and reign with Christ a thousand years during the what period? The Sabbath millennium, right? The millennium. They live and reign with Christ a thousand years. Don't you think it's interesting that you have six 1,000 year periods and then a seventh of a millennium? Isn't that interesting? Now, if there was any correlation between the days of the week and a road map for what is about to happen in human history, you would think that there would be some correlation that you could notice. Yeah. All right? So, let's go back. We'll leave this one for a moment. We're going to say that this is Millennium 1. Okay. This is Millennium 2. Was there anything really important that happened in the second thousand year period that we were just talking about? Right. There was this big event called the Flood. Right. Where the waters that had been separated came back together. Right. That's interesting, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to write it up there, okay? Now, in some circles, I'd get in a lot of trouble for doing this, but, you know, we're going to, we're going to, we're just, we're just noticing things. We believe in liberty. We believe in liberty here. So here, you have the, the division which had occurred during creation. All that water comes back together. What happened here? You have the dry land up here, right? You have the founding of the Abrahamic covenant. You have the founding of the nation of Israel, that Israel is as a green tree, right? A fruitful bough. It's interesting, okay? What about this one here? This would be the fourth, this would be the fourth thousand year period. So this, this period here would be one to a thousand years. This is a thousand years to two thousand years. Two thousand years to three thousand years. What happened during that fourth millennium in human history? Here you have the sun, moon, and stars. Open your Bibles with me to Revelation chapter 12, verse 1. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 12, verse 1, and there appeared. When you're there, just say amen. Amen. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. What was made on day four of creation? The sun, the moon, and the stars. And here in the fourth millennium you have a woman appear. Who is this woman? She's the church. She's the church and she gives birth to the Messiah. And she flees into the wilderness in verse 6 to escape the dragon. Interestingly enough, you move over to this, this day of the week, day 5. This is 5. In human history, what very significant event occurred on day five? You have the transference of power from pagan Rome to papal Rome. And we know that Revelation chapter 13 figures that power as a sea beast. As a sea beast. Isn't that interesting? sea beast. 
right? What was made here? Day five, the sea creatures. Number six, you have the day of Adam, you have the day of man, which is six. And you have the founding of another great power that is the dominant power in this world today. That is figured as a land beast in Revelation chapter 13. These are awfully interesting coincidences, are they not? Yeah. And if there was any connection, and I'm not saying that there is, just noting similarities, as you draw to the end of this sixth millennium, you would expect major things to be happening, wouldn't you? And when you open up the newspaper today, for those who are paying attention, it is very interesting to see all of those things happening. So brothers and sisters, it's 1230. Thank you so much for uh, your patience and listening. I'll sum up by saying, there are many signs in our world today that God expects us to be paying attention to, which tell us that His coming is very, very, Him two oh seven.
sisters, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, the suddenness with which the world can change is staggering. Things happen like lightning, and there's no going back. And I just want to appeal to you today to consider where we are in the stream of time. I speak to myself, I speak to you, as friends and as brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us consider and be sober and vigilant, because everything around us points to the fact that Jesus is coming soon. Amen. That his coming is even at the door. May we be ready. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, we ask, Lord, because we cannot cleanse ourselves of sin and iniquity, Lord, we ask for you to create in us clean hearts. We ask, Lord, that we will be cognizant Though, Lord, the world goes on as though nothing is going to change for 10,000 years.